The semi-finals of the Champions League have pitted together two teams who many did not expect to be here. Liverpool established a solid 3-0 home lead against Premier League champions Manchester City and then saw out the tie with a 2-1 win at the Etihad to unseat many people's favourites for the competition. Meanwhile, Roma looked dead and buried at 4-1 after the first leg in Barcelona, but beat Anastal Valverde's men 3-0 in Rome to complete one of the biggest upsets in recent European competition. Liverpool and Roma have met in the Champions League before, during the second group phase of the 2001-2002 competition. The sides drew 0-0 in Rome, before goals from Yari Littman and Emil Heskey secured a 2-0 win at Anfield for a Liverpool team also featuring Steven Gerrard and Jamie Carragher. Both Liverpool and Roma have generally favoured a 4-3-3 this season and indeed Liverpool have not deviated from this system. Against Barcelona in the second leg though, Roma deployed a 3-5-2 of sorts, a significant change from Eusebio Di Francesco's previous selections and one that caught Barcelona on the hop. In attack, the 3-5-2 became more of a 3-4-2-1, with Patrick Schick and Raja Nainggolan moving into the channels to create overloads with their respective wing-backs. Edin Dzeko generally stayed central, acting as a focal point for crosses, looking to get headers or shots on target, or to lay the ball back to a player rushing forwards or in from the half space. As Barcelona's fullbacks pushed forwards, as expected, this meant Roma could create overloads out wide and attack regularly from the flanks. Roma looked to play quickly and vertically, with central centre-back Costas Manalas or deep-dropping central midfielder Daniele De Rossi pinging long passes into the vacant spaces behind Barcelona's fullbacks for either Sheik and Nangolan or the wing-backs to chase down. This meant that Roma were not only able to break Barcelona's high press, but they actually exploited the gaps that the pressing game left. By having three at the back, as well as De Rossi dropping in, Barcelona's front two could not effectively press every passing option, which either lured an additional midfielder forwards, creating gaps through the centre, or afforded De Rossi or Manalas time to pass from deep. Defensively, Roma's 3-5-2 became a 5-4-1, with Sheik moving into a right midfield space, Nangolan moving left, and De Rossi and Strutman positioned in the centre. While Roma pressed effectively, they combined this with a high defensive line, which meant that even when Lionel Messi dropped into space between the lines, Roma had compacted the space by pushing forwards and allowed a central defender to follow, usually Juan Jesus or Federico Fazio, the two wider centre-backs. This still left Roma a man over at the back on Suarez, while the wing-backs could cover the wide spaces behind Roma's four-man midfield press. Roma could well use this system against Liverpool. The directness of passing would suit a team playing against Liverpool's excellent pressing game. While Liverpool's midfield three will look to push and disrupt Roma's play, if De Rossi drops off, Liverpool would quickly find themselves outnumbered in the central midfield area should one of their players push up onto De Rossi or vulnerable to the long diagonal pass if they sit off. Liverpool's strength is in their front three, with Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino and Mo Salah arguably the most potent attacking unit in English football. If Roma go four at the back against them, then they run the risk of leaving space in behind in the half spaces just as they did against Barcelona in the first leg. Should they do this, Mane and Salah will have a field day, especially if supported by their full backs. However, if Roma stick with their three at the back, then they have two advantages. The first is that a centre-back can push up onto Roberto Firmino should he drop off, much as Roma's centre-backs did against Messi. They'll still have adequate cover for Mane and Salah as they'll be marked man for man and the wing-backs can assist. The second benefit is that generally, one of Liverpool's midfield get forwards in support of attacking moves, often Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain from the right half space. Daniele De Rossi can track his runs, or the left wing-back can come inside, and Roma do not leave themselves outnumbered. Liverpool's ability to win lies in their pressing game and getting the ball forwards to the front three. Defensively, Edin Dzeko is exactly the sort of powerful striker that Liverpool hate to play against, and Roma are also potent from set pieces which will worry Jurgen Klopp. Liverpool's style and system are extremely effective, especially in knockout football but Eusebio De Francesco has shown a canny knack for picking tactics that work when it really counts. 
and what worked against Messi and co could well be effective against Liverpool too. Indeed, it might be Roma's best hope.